Hey guys, this is Lawrence from BuildMyEcommerce.com. Thank you for taking this Open Cart version two video quick start course. The video quick start course does one thing very well, which is to have you up and running fast. I will focus on the core essentials to start your own online shop with Open Cart because as a beginner, you don't want to be overwhelmed by too much information. I'll give you a good foundation, then we'll get into the fun part of building the store. By the end of this course, you will have the knowledge to create this online store that is functional and responsive across multiple devices. Hope you're excited and just make sure to watch every single video, especially if you're a beginner. Because I spent a lot of time organizing this course to make sure it flows from one lecture to the next. For this course, you need a web hosting company that uses cPanel, SSL certificate, OpenCart version 2, which is free. To download, go to opencart.com and click download link at the top to find the latest version. Pixlr, this is a free online photo editor and um, we use this to create graphics and for photo optimization. In this section, I'll show you how to install OpenCart using the cPanel. Some hosting companies have quick install for OpenCart, but I highly recommend you learn how to do it manually. Why? Because sometimes those quick installations provided by the hosting companies are modified and can cause problems later on. You also learn how to create MySQL database and use file manager program to upload the OpenCart installation files. You can think of cPanel as an operating system like Windows, OS X for Mac, Android, and etc. So let's look at why we need operating systems first before we start talking about cPanel. Without an operating system, you won't be able to use Facebook, monitor, hard drive, keyboard, printer, as you can see, computers are useless without an operating system. cPanel will have all the tools and software services you need to install OpenCart and run your online shop. This is what the cPanel looks like. It uses a graphical user interface, so it's very easy to use. You have access to many programs, but we're going to focus on using a couple of them. Open up the welcome email you received from the hosting company after you have joined. That email should have all the necessary information for you to log in. If you can't find that info, simply call or email your hosting company and they'll be more than happy to help you out. In the next two lectures, I will use MySQL and File Manager program to set up and install OpenCart. Prior to OpenCart installation, you need to use MySQL program to create a user and database. First, let's talk about why we need MySQL. MySQL is designed to handle lots of data. But let's just focus on one for now. When a customer makes a purchase from your online store, one piece of data they must enter is the shipping address to mail the goods. When they return to your store to make another purchase, they can just retrieve the shipping address without retyping. So where does this information get stored? They are stored in the MySQL database in an organized manner. To access the database, you need to assign a user. So who is the user? You, the store owner, is the user because you need to access customer information such as email, shipping address, phone number, etc. Okay, so let's create MySQL database and create a user for that database. From the cPanel, click MySQL database wizard. Create a name for the database. I'll call mine Pen the Dog, since we'll be creating this pet store later on. For the username, I'll just type 10, since that is name of my dog. Please note, 
you are limited to seven characters. So create something short. Create a password and click create user. Check all privileges. This will give you complete control over the database. Click next step and you're done. Let's first download the OpenCard installation file from opencard.com and save it to your desktop. After you finish the download, open the OpenCard folder and in the upload folder, you need to rename a couple of files. Change config-dist.php to config.php. Do the same in the admin folder. Now let's create one zip file for all the files in the upload folder. So we can upload just one file. First, select all by holding down Command plus A if you're using Mac or Control plus A for PCs and compress the items by right-clicking on your mouse. To upload the zip file to your server, we're going to use the File Manager program from the C panel. Think of File Manager as your hard drive where all the files necessary to run your online shop are located. Click File Manager and click Go. Now go to Upload, choose File, and select the zip file you created earlier. This contains all the necessary files to install OpenCart. After the upload's done, you can click Go Back. Select the zip file and click Extract. And click Reload to see all the files. Go to yourstorename.com forward slash install to start the installation process. Click Continue. Make sure you don't see any error messages in the status. Click Continue. You'll see local host next to the host name. For the majority of the hosting providers, this is the default setting. If you're not sure, check with your hosting provider. For the username, this can sometimes be tricky for beginners. It's the database username you created earlier but you also have to include a prefix, which is usually the cPanel username. Let's go back to cPanel and click MySQL Databases. Scroll down and you'll see the database name and username here. You must include the prefix, so in this case, it's buildmye underscore 10. Copy and paste the username. Enter the MySQL password you created earlier. For the database name, again include the prefix. I'll just copy and paste here. Now just create username, password, and email to access the back end. Click continue. You get the installation complete message. But it also says here don't forget to delete your installation directory. Let's go to the file manager and select the install folder. And click delete and delete files. Now let's check out the backend dashboard. Go to yourstorename.com forward slash admin. Enter your username and password to log in. So in here, you can add and edit products, check customer orders, and etc. In the next section, we'll start setting up your online shop. In this section, you'll learn how to remove the sample data that came with the OpenCart installation and start setting up your shop. You'll learn how to name your store, set up the store logo, fave icon, create category, shipping options, and footer. This is probably the least exciting section of this course, but let's keep a positive attitude so we can get to the fun stuff later. When you perform fresh installation of the OpenCart, it contains sample data to show you the capabilities of the shopping cart. All these have to be removed in order for us to build a store. Log in to your backend and click Catalog, Categories, click this box to check all, and click the trash icon to delete all. We have three more here. Check all again and click Delete. 
Do the same by going to products. Click this box and delete. Next, click attributes and attributes again. Check this box and delete. Click attributes group and check the box and delete. Let's check the front end to see what else we need to delete. Click here and click your store name. We now have to delete the slideshow banners and logos. Go to system, design, banners. Check this box and delete. Finally, to delete the logos, go to catalog, manufacturers, check this box to select all and delete. And let's check the front end again. As you can see, it's empty. This will give us a good starting point to build a store. We're now going to enter the name of your store and other necessary information. From the back end, we're going to System, Settings, and in the General tab, you're going to name the store. Enter your name, business address, and telephone number. I'll be creating the dog store. So I'll enter Ten the dog. And this is my dog Ten. For the store owner, let's enter 10. And for the address, I'll just enter random one. Enter your business phone number. These information will be shown in the contact us page. So let's check it out by clicking this icon and 10 the dog. Scroll down and click contact us. Let's go back to the system settings and click the store tab this time. Here you're going to enter the meta title and description. To see where these will be shown, I'm going to look at Tender Dog's competitor called Petco. As you may know, one of the largest pet store in the US. Let's go to google.com and enter Petco in the search box. You can see here it says petco.com, pet supplies, pet food, and pet products. They have the store name and the tagline. So this block of information can be entered here in the meta title. I'm going to enter tender dog, dog supplies, dog food, and dog products. For the meta tag description, let's go back to Google page. And you can see here under the website address, says Petco offers a variety of pet supplies and pet food. Shop online now for your pet products. Basically, it's a short description about your online shop. I'm going to enter similar description. For the local tab, enter the information where the store is located and check yes for auto update currency if you sell overseas. In this lecture, you'll learn how to upload your store logo and fave icon, which is the image that shows up next to your web address at the top. Go to System, Settings, and click the pencil icon. Click the Image tab. Here you can change the store logo and fave icon. Click the thumbnail next to the store logo to upload the new logo. The current logo dimension is 268 by 50 pixels. If you can, try to make your logo same dimension. You don't want to make your logo too big or too small. If you don't know how to resize your logo, don't worry, we'll go over that in the graphics section. The file format for the current logo is PNG, but you can also use JPEGs. I'm going to create a new folder called Logos and upload the new logo. And while I'm here, I'm also going to upload the fave icon. Select the new logo. Click save. And let's go to the storefront to see the new logo. Now let's go back to use the new fave icon. Click the thumbnail next to the icon and select the new fave icon. Click save and go to the storefront. You can see the new fave icon here. 
Again, if you don't know how to create this, we'll cover this in the graphics section. To create category, go to Catalog, Categories, and click the plus icon to enter new category. Let's enter Travel and Outdoors for the category name. Scroll down and enter the meta tag title. Let's take a look at real example from google.com. This is the title tag and description below. Enter relevant keywords in the title and description. Make sure to keep it short and to the point. Now let's go to the data tab and make sure to check the box next to the top. This will make sure the category name will be shown at the top of the website. And once you're done, click Save. OpenCart comes built in with several shipping options. You can also purchase third-party extensions if you don't see the one that suits you. Our focus on one I believe is the most useful and briefly touch base on a couple of other options. Shipping can be set up by going to Extensions, Shipping. If you can, try to provide free shipping since customers don't want to pay extra. You can just add the cost of the shipping to the product to offer free shipping. Let's install the free shipping by clicking the plus icon to install. And click the pencil icon to edit and change the status to enabled. You can also set a minimum amount in order for the free shipping to become active. Another popular choice is to offer flat rate shipping and weight based shipping if you are selling heavy items. To modify the footer information, let's go to Catalog, Information. You can enter all the relevant information here. In this section, you'll learn how to create your first product. I'll be creating this pet product called Bark Control Pet Training System. All the lectures discussed will take place in the catalog, products, in the back end. To create new product, go to Catalog, Products, and click the plus icon. In the General tab, enter the product name. I'll enter PetSafe Gentle Spray Bark Control Pet Training System and fill in the description and meta tag title. Meta tag title will be shown at the top of the browser. Choose your keywords carefully here because it will be shown in the search engines. In addition to the description, also enter the meta tag description. Let me show you a real example of where this information will be shown. I'm going to copy this product name and type site colon petco.com to search products only from the site. Enter space and paste the product name. This here is the meta tag description. Good practice is to mention the product name again with the short description. Next, go to the data tab to upload the main product image. Click the thumbnail and pencil icon. I highly recommend you create new folder to keep yourself organized. I create new folder called product images. And inside that folder, create another folder called travel and outdoors. Click the upload icon to upload the first image. If you can, try to keep the image size consistent for all your products. We'll go over how to resize images in the graphics section. Enter the model number, price, and quantity. You have the option to subtract stock if you only have limited quantity. In the links tab, we need to select the manufacturer. In order to add one, we must first go to catalog, manufacturers but before we do that let's save what we have so far now go to catalog manufacturers and click the plus icon to add enter pet safe since that is the name of the manufacturer click save go back to the links tab from the product we just created 
and we can see the name right here by clicking in the box. Choose the category for the product. Select Travel and Outdoors. Let's save and check the front end. Go to Travel and Outdoors to see the first product. Make sure you're in the Catalog, Products. Click the pencil icon next to the product. Discount and Special can be confusing to understand for beginners. The discount is sale on product's price when the customer is ordering more pieces of the same product. L let's say the normal price of this product is $20. And if the customer purchases 10 or more, they can buy each for $17 instead of $20. To set that up, go to the Discount tab and click the plus icon to add discount. Enter the minimum quantity in order for the discount to become active. Enter 10 and change the price to 17. You can set the start and end date, but I'll just skip this and click save. You can see in the product page, it tells you here if you buy 10 or more, price will be $17 each. Special is when the product goes on sale, and you don't need to set minimum quantity for this. Customers will see both the normal price and sale price to show customers how much they are saving. Let's set the sale price at $15 by clicking the Add icon. And skip the start and end date. Click Save and check the product page. Here you can see the normal price of $20 crossed out and shows you the special price. Additional images are shown below the main product image as thumbnails. Customers can click here to see the bigger image size. To upload additional images, go to the Image tab and click the plus icon. Click the Shopping Cart and Edit. I'm going to open Product Images folder, Travel and Outdoors. So I have the main product image here. To upload two additional images, click this Upload icon and select the first file. Click the Upload icon again and select the second file. Click the first image to add. As you can see, we added the first image. Click the plus icon again to add the second image and repeat the same process. Okay, now we have two additional images. Let's click Save and go to the product page. We can now see the images here, and when you click on it, you can see the enlarged version. In this section, you'll learn how to enable SEO and create SEO keywords for your categories and products. These are keywords you see when you visit any website. For example, from this website, you can see the product keywords are shown here in the URL at the top. To create the category SEO, let's go to Catalog, Categories, click Edit next to the category name. Go to the Data tab and scroll down to SEO Keyword. Enter the keywords for the category here. Since we're in the travel and outdoors category, that is what we're going to type in here. Couple of important things I want to mention. Don't use spaces between the words. Only hyphens are allowed. Make sure the keywords you enter here are globally unique. Meaning don't use this exact same keywords in another category as that will cause problems. Click save and let's create the product SEO next. To create the product SEO, go to Catalog, Products, click Edit next to the product. Go to the Data tab to change the SEO keyword. This product is called PetSafe Gentle Spray Bark Control Pet Training System. 
So that is what we'll enter in the SEO keyword. Just like the category SEO, make sure to use hyphens instead of spaces. And the keywords are globally unique. Click Save and go to the front end. You'll notice we don't see any changes in the URL. That is because we must enable the SEO in order to see the changes. In the next lecture, we'll do just that. Enabling the SEO is a two-step process. First, go to System, Settings, Server, and click Yes next to the Use SEO URL. Make sure to click Save. Next, we have to use the File Manager to change one file name. If you don't change the file name, SEO won't work. Change the file htaccess.txt to .htaccess. Now let's go to the front end, click the Travel and Outdoors category. You'll see the category SEO URL at the top. Next, click the product and you'll see the product SEO URL at the top. In this section, you learn how to resize and optimize your product images. In addition, you'll be creating the main slideshow image and fave icon. We'll be using the free photo editor called Pixlr to accomplish everything. So let's get started. Before we start this lecture, let's go to Pixlr.com and start the Pixlr editor. So I have this product image that is 1500 by 1500 pixels. I don't need the image size to be that big. I'm going to resize the image to about 600, which still looks good enough. So by making the image dimension smaller, the file size will also be smaller, which means it will actually load faster. Because this image is perfect square, we can simply scale down the whole image to 600 by 600 by going to Image, Image Size, and enter 600. Now let's go to File, Save Image. Here we can optimize the image to make sure the file size is not too big. JPEG is suitable for most photos. And play around with the quality control. Lower the quality, smaller the file size, as you can see from the lower right. I usually go with 70, but play around with your image to select the proper setting. Just make sure not to go too low because it can really mess up your image quality. Once you're happy with the setting, click OK to save it to your desktop. Fave icon is the small image shown usually next to your web address at the top. Size is 32 by 32 pixels using the PNG file format. Make sure you can still identify what the image is, even though it's small. I'll be using my dog's paw as my fave icon, since it is easy to tell what it is when small. Let's go to File, Open Image to open the logo. Select this Marquee tool, and at the top, change the Constraint to Aspect Ratio. This will give us a perfect square selection. Click and drag from top left to the bottom right, and let go of your mouse. Make sure the paw is inside the selection box. We want to fill it in instead of having too much negative space around. Now let's crop this by going to Image, Crop. This will give us a nice square. We now just have to delete other stuff around the paw. Click the Erase tool. If you need to adjust the size, you can do so by clicking here. I'm going to select the brush size 30 without any feather and start erasing. Now let's center the paw by using the move tool like so. All we have to do now is scale down the image. Because if you go to image, image size, the size is much bigger than 32 by 32. So let's enter 32 and click OK. To view the image in actual size, go to view, actual pictures, to make it 100%. As you can see, small, 
but identifiable. In this lecture, we're going to create this slideshow image that you see here. Uh, the image dimension for this is 1140 by 500. And the image size is good for viewing on a desktop and also for mobile devices because the, the design of the theme is responsive. So um, the original image size I have is 3000 by 2000 pixels. And you can see that here. It says 3000 by 2000 pixels on the lower left corner of the window. And you can open this image file by going to your assets folder. And to open it, all you have to do is go to file and then open image and locate that file. So in order to create this final image that you see here, um, I need to create a new image size in here. That's 1140 by 500. And after I've created the new image size, I'm going to drag this uh, layer into the new window and then scale it down. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and go to file and then click new image. And we want this to be 1140 by 500. And then click OK. OK, so we have the we have two windows now, right? We have a blank canvas here and then the original image here. And all we have to do is to drag this, click on this uh, layer here, background layer with the, the small thumbnail that you see here. And then click and hold, okay? And then drag it over to this new window. Okay, and it pasted the layer here as you can see. Now we have two layers in here and let's go ahead and delete this background uh, layer here. And you can see here on the right, it, it, this layer is actually locked. And to unlock it, just double click on it, on this icon. And we unlock the layer and then click it, drag it to the trash bin to delete. And let's just rename this background copy by double clicking here. And let's just call it slideshow image and then just click anywhere. Now to resize this image, uh, you have to go to edit and then the free transform. And you wanna grab one of the corner handles here and while you're dragging it down, um, as you can see, it's distorting the image again and you have to press down the, hold down the shift key, which will constrain it, right? So scale it down and after you've done that, let go. And then click and drag inside the square here that you see. Okay, let's drag it up here. And what I want is uh, some negative space on the left because we want some space for the uh, the graphics that you see here. Okay, so I think that's this is pretty good for what we need. Okay, and let's press enter. And let's go ahead and create this uh, first square that you see here. So I'm going to select the marquee tool. And if you start to click and drag, you can see that, you know, it can be difficult to uh, create a perfect square here. And the easiest way to do this is, as you see here at the top toolbar, it says constraint and it says no restriction. Let's change that to aspect ratio and make sure the width and height is one to one. And now when you click and drag, it will always be perfect square. So we don't want it to be too big or too small, right? So I think that's pretty good. And let's just uh, click and drag in the middle here and over to the right. And yeah, I think that's pretty good right there. Now let's go ahead and create a new layer and we're gonna call this one blue box because we're going to fill it in with the uh, this blue color that you see. So let's grab the paint bucket tool and then cl click on this uh, set main color here you see on the bottom. Click on that and let's change it to blue. Okay. I think. 
like uh, we don't want it to be too light because we want the white text to be readable I think that's pretty good right there click OK and let's uh, click in the middle here and we fill it in blue next let's go ahead and enter the text now as you can see it's the 20 percent off the 20 is different size compared to the percentage sign and then the off so I'm gonna go ahead and create each layer for these three items that you see here so 20 will be one layer percentage sign will be another layer and then the off will be the third layer so let's do the 20 first let's grab this type tool and then click somewhere in the box here and let's type 20 and the font that I use is Gotham bold and if you don't have this font you can choose any other font that you like I'm going to change the color to white click OK and let's change the size to something bigger um, 95 I think uh, that's too big let's go 93 because I want some space here for the percentage sign and then the off I think that looks pretty good and then we can always come back here and uh, reposition the number here let's go ahead and click OK and next let's do the percentage sign so let's click here again and then percent sign change the color to white and then let's just scale this down and click and drag um, let's see it's 70 no 55 looks pretty good okay click OK and then uh, another way to do this is instead of clicking a new layer here just duplicate this layer just click and then drag it to this uh, layer icon here that you see and it will duplicate a copy and what this will do is it will keep the white color so that I don't have to keep going back and change the color to white you know it's already set for me here and all I have to do is click the type tool and then click over the percent sign and just change that to off and I'm gonna change that from Gotham bold to a uh, Gotham book and let's change the size okay I think uh, 30 is pretty good there click OK now that we're done with that section uh, let's go ahead and do this title here it says pet safe gentle spray bark control pet training system so let's go and click the type tool again and let's uh, copy the I mean not copy let's type the first line pet safe gentle spray pet safe gentle spray and then the next line is bark control pet bark control pet and then the last line is training system Okay, let's just uh, change this to white and let's go ahead and scale this down it's too big right now okay I think also we can change the font to uh, bold okay somewhere there click OK now that we're done with this section here we can uh, reposition this to where we want so let's uh, move the pet gentle spray down a little bit select the move tool and then you can hit the the down arrow button let's move to left I just want to center everything a little bit better that's why and then let's go to the 20 now quick little tip here instead of clicking the down arrow once what you can do is it only moves it by one pixel when you do that right 
by holding down the shift key and then pressing down the arrow, down arrow, it moves at about, I think like five to 10 pixels at a time, which is a little bit easier. So I'm gonna move it down a little bit here. Maybe one more, let's go back up, move it to the left a little bit. And the percent sign, move to the left. Okay, let's uh, just center a little better. And then the off. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect for this. That looks pretty good. So next, let's create this uh, red uh, rectangle and then the shop now text. So let's click this uh, more key tool. Now, if you remember, we still had an uh, aspect ratio for the constraint. Let's change that to no restriction. And let's uh, click and drag here to about right there. Looks pretty good. Okay. And my layer window disappeared. If that happens to you, go to view and then click layers. It should come back as you can see right here. And I'm going to create a new layer and call this one red rectangle. And then let's click set the main color for this to red. Okay. And then select the paint bucket tool and then fill it in. Next, let's cl click the uh, type tool and let's type shop now and change the color to white. And let's uh, increase the size. Okay. 33. Okay, 33 looks pretty good. Click OK. All right, so there you have that. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, now, what we need to do is save this image. Um, so I'm going to save it to my computer. To do that, all you have to do is go to File, Save. And let's give it a name. And let's call it Slideshow. Slideshow image. And for the quality, I'm just going to leave it at 80. And you don't want this to be 100%, you know, because we don't want the file size to be too big. Right now, it's 101 kilobytes here, as you can see here. If I increase this to like 100, it goes up to 521, right? That's too big. So let's change that to 80. Another thing is, you don't want it to be too small because you lose. Uh, the image quality, which is not something, which is something that you don't want. So 80 is pretty good. And for the file format, we're gonna keep it at JPEG. Now let's go ahead and click OK. And then uh, you can just save it to your desktop. One other thing I forgot to mention is that if you want to retain all these layers, uh, you want to save it as a Pexlo file. So go to File, Save. And make sure you change the format to layered pixel image. And what that would do is it would save all the layers that you see here, as opposed to JPEG, it will basically compress all the layers into a single layer, which means you won't be able to come back to that file and edit. But by going to the layered pixel image, you will retain all the layers so that you can come back and edit anytime. Okay. So in the next lecture, um, I'm gonna be uploading the slideshow image plus the other images that uh, we created in this section. Now it's time to upload the slideshow image. Since you already know how to upload the product image and fave icon from an earlier sections, let's focus on uploading the slideshow. Getting the slideshow to work is a three-step process. First, you have to add the image to banners. Second step is to add the banner to the slideshow module. The final step is to add the slideshow module to the layout. This will determine where the slideshow will be shown in the home page. Go to System, Design, Banners. Click the plus icon to add new. Give it a name. 
I'm just going to call this one slideshow banner and add banner. Click the image thumbnail and click upload icon. Choose the JPEG file we saved earlier. Click the image, you can give it a title and also the URL link to the product. So when someone clicks on the slideshow banner, it will go to the product page. I'm going to paste the product URL here and call this one pet training system. Now click save. Next, let's add the banner to the slideshow module. So go to extensions, modules, click edit next to the slideshow. Click add module and select the banner we just created. Image dimension is 1140 by 500. Now click save. Final step is to add the slideshow module to the layout. We must do this step because it will determine where the slideshow will be visible. Go to system, design, layouts. Click edit next to home. Since the slideshow will be shown only on the home page. Click add module and make sure the module is set to slideshow. And this is where you position the slideshow. You have four options here. Content top, bottom, left and right. For our purpose, we want the slideshow to be positioned at the top. So let's select content top. Click save. And now let's check out the new slideshow by going to the storefront. You can see the slideshow here. And when you click on the image, it will go to the product page. In this section, you'll learn how to set up PayPal standard and SSL certificate for your store. In order to follow along, you must already have PayPal account and purchase the SSL certificate. PayPal standard lets you accept payments from customers online. It's free to use, but they charge you a fee for each transaction. SSL, which stands for Secure Sockets Layer, allows you to perform secure transactions online and protect customers' data. All the e-commerce sites must have this padlock icon in order to perform secure transaction. To see this in action, I'm logged into my Amazon account, and you'll see the padlock icon to protect my sensitive information. To use the PayPal standard, you must install the extension first. It's included with the OpenCard installation. Let's go to Extensions, Payments. First, click the Install button next to the PayPal payment standard and click Edit. Enter your PayPal email to accept payments. For the transaction method, select Sale and this will allow you to instantly receive payments without delay. Make sure to select Enabled for the status. Now click the Order Status tab. Right now, everything is set to Cancelled. Change the status to what you see on your left. So for example, Completed Status, change that to Complete. If you don't change, status will show Cancelled even though it's complete. Change the other statuses and click Save. The easiest way for you to install SSL certificate is to purchase one through your hosting company and have them install it for your domain. Installation service should be free. Cost of the SSL certificate varies from $10 to $50. Cheapest option is to purchase one through a third party such as Namecheap. Purchase is valid for one year and can be extended. Please note, you want to use private SSL, not shared. After the hosting company installed your SSL certificate, go to the back end. And you want to go to Settings, Edit, Server tab. Make sure to click Yes and save. To see if SSL is live on your site, go to the checkout page 
and look for the padlock icon. I'm using Safari as my web browser. And when you click on the padlock, it says here Safari is using an encrypted connection. This confirms the SSL certificate is live and your customers can have a secure transaction from your site. We have finally come to an end of this OpenCard version 2 video quick start course. So from what we have learned throughout this course, I have uploaded a few more products and added more categories. Repetition is king. I suggest you play around and make a lot of mistakes because that's how you learn, right? Please try to build this site yourself from using the images from the assets folder. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. This is not the end, and as more features are added to OpenCard version 2, I'll be updating the course accordingly. Till next time, take care guys.